Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. I apologize for the little bit of delay at our end and thanks for bearing that with us. Uh, on behalf of ICK, I would like to welcome all of you to the webinar today. It's a special, a special session with Brother Dawood Baid. I would like to thank Brother Dawood for accepting the invitation to give our community this special talk on raising champions. We are live on Zoom as well as Facebook. And as always, after the talk, you can ask your questions. Please keep it to the topic. It's a very interesting topic that we have today. And you can ask questions in uh, Zoom or by uh, commenting at the Facebook Live. A quick introduction of Islamic Center of Kuwait. As you know, we are involved in doing Dawah activities in the state of Kuwait in English language. Brother Dawood is a mindset coach, an educationist, and quizzer. An electronics engineer, MA in education, and an MBA. He leads the curriculum team at Sky Education. Daoud left his lavish career as patent and trademark attorney in Switzerland, Moscow, and Dubai to work on SDG, Global Goals, and Skills Workshop. He's the author of the book, The Education Riddle. Daoud is a certified instructor for teaching 21st century skills and leadership, and is developing a student-centric curriculum and run online hub schooling, The Golden Sparrow. Daoud loves horses and promise to reply within 48 hours. You can reach him at daoud at skyeducation.in. Daoud is spelled as D-A-W-O-O-D. We will put it in the comment section as well for you. And uh, with that, I hand it over to Brother Daoud. Uh, we'll get started. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam rasul al-kareem wa ala ali wa sahabi ishmaeen amma baad. We thank Allah Azza wa Jal, we praise Him and to Him is a return. Jazakallah brothers and sisters, this is uh, indeed, you know, I always just uh, admire the hospitality in terms of uh, Kuwait. And every time I've come in, I've made friends, I've learned a lot. And also I admire the patience level, which exactly is one of the things we might require today. If, if the internet goes up and down and starts playing games with us again. Uh, on, the, on a more serious note on what we are trying to do here in this webinar on Ajuma is I, was, I, I keep doing this little webinars or rather also on a Friday we do these dars at home, uh, perhaps every after Maghrib, but Friday the more special we do it in the afternoon. And I was telling my daughters today that why are we doing these reminders? What are the purpose of reminders? And subhanAllah, this has something immediately to do with what we're going to talk about in raising champions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fazakir inna manta muzakir. You know, keep reminding it is beneficial for you. And that is exactly what we are trying to do with, the, with concepts of Jummahs, with concepts of Eid coming in, you know, the Salah that is coming in. They, there, is a, there is a continuity in what, you know, these zikr, the very word zikr Allah uses is the zikr mentioned for the book, Kitab, and zikr is also the remembrance we are talking about. And the idea is, what is your purpose? What are you made for? And this, this idea that we're doing every Friday, Alhamdulillah, I think in the last pandemic, when I saw that there is a, there is a continuity of somebody coming and addressing you, there's a story of Prophet series going on today, you're doing something on parenting, you are learning a lot of reminders, a lot of the stories you know, and a lot of stories may be new, but the point is someone is reminding what your roles are, someone is telling what you're trying to do. And this is what we are trying to do here. All right, I, I hope you can hear me and I can uh, see all of you. You can see the screen. Uh, the video is off perhaps for some reason, Brother Farooq. Yes, we can uh, see the screen. We cannot see the video, but we can hear you loud and clear. Now we can see all the right, video. Barakallah. Oh, Barakallah. Feek. So the very idea of what championship is all about. SubhanAllah, when I said about feedback, when I talked about reminders, when I talk about zikr, the concept of this entire idea of, you know, you're reminded again and again is this idea of what Raising Champion is all about. SubhanAllah, there's an amazing story that we know about this champion swimmer. And I said, I'll do a lot of sports today because when the moment I say champion, the word champion only reminds me of sports. And uh, Alhamdulillah, even in the pandemic, some of you, the Red fans had celebrated Liverpool, celebrating. And I was talking to my young kids and I do these webinars with teenagers and I learned so much from them. And we had this entire, you know, just a quiz on Mo Salah, as they call it, Muhammad Salah. And I asked them, what is the chant that the Liverpool fans say to Muhammad Salah? 
and it's very interesting. You can Google it at some point of later that the entire stadium comes and says to Muhammad Salah, and there's a very beautiful poem they chant that if you score more. We will be like you, and we are ready to become Muslims. You know, of course, there is more rhythm. I don't know exactly. I'm not. I'm not so much of a Liverpool or rather a, a Premier League fan. But the idea is, people love champions, and when they see a champion, they want to be one. Champions inspire. Champions motivate. Champions push you. Champions themselves are role model. So the very idea, any parent. Anyone that you can meet, anyone that you can go and talk to, ask any father, any mother, what do you want your son to be? A champion or average Joe? I don't think there's any father in this in this webinar elsewhere in your massages in the IK say ICK or elsewhere who says, oh, okay, I will accept my son to be average. Perhaps we have aspiration. We won't say that I want them to be a champion. We want them to be healthy, happy, and that is what a definition of a champion is. So. What the sports does, and it it really separates the chaff from the wheat. You know, my friend used to always say something very interesting. He says, "Sports don't develop character; it reveals character." You play a match of football with somebody. You go and play even something as simple as you know a, a carrom board or whatever you do. You will know how sour losers they are and how gracious winners they are. And this is the champion mindset. Brother Farooq just introduced me as a mindset coach. Well, you keep telling something over and over again. People start believing that, and I say that. You know, I've been telling myself a mindset coach. I don't know others, but I started believing in myself. Now, this is the same idea you give to your children. How many of us use positive language? And if you do that, that is a champion mindset. That is exactly what we call raising champions. So, what I'm going and sharing next with you. Is the most important slide of the entire thing, and if people connect, inshallah, hope not. But ever you learn, learn anything, and this thing you have learned a lot, and which is the very idea. Feedback is the breakfast of the champion. This is a very popular book, One Minute Manager. Ken Blankard, he's been a, a mindset coach for a lot of champions, a lot of business tycoons. He is someone who people refer to as the guru of you know of of psychology and you know business psychology. That's the that's the whole idea. And he says, "What I started with, zikr. Zikr is reminder, nothing but feedback. You know, Allah Azza wa Jal keeps telling you that the more you are connected with the idea of everything being with Allah Azza wa Jal, the better you are. And this is exactly what your children need. The more feedback you give, the more concepts you teach them, the more you spend time, the more you converse with them, champions are already raising in your house. You know, I will give you two examples, and from two very different worlds." One Michael Phelps and one Ibn Taymiyyah, and you will be surprised the way we are amalgamating, and that's how I do because I talk to teenagers. If I talk about Ibn Taymiyyah and some of the Salafs, they'll say I lose them. But if I were to talk about Michael Phelps, and Michael Phelps said like a lot of lot of other sports people have said that he mentioned something very interesting. He said before I got into the podium, I've already won in my mind, not once, several times over. So what he's saying is, before he won a gold medal, and by the way, Michael Phelps is the most decorated Olympian. He is more decorated than 40 nations of the world, including you know, including Kuwait and India. If you're if you're looking at these two countries right now, he has won more medals, the golds and the silvers and bronze, than 40 nations, including the nations we are sitting and attending this webinar in. What does he say? He says that before I went to the podium, I've already stood on the podium in my mind. What does Ibn Taymiyyah say? Ibn Taymiyyah says something so similar. He says, "If you have not tasted Jannah in dunya, you will never be able to taste Jannah in akhirah." Subhanallah. I mean, the idea is, if you have not enjoyed the halawatul iman here, you will not enjoy the same halwa in the akhirah. And this is what we are talking about. So, number one, if you want to raise champions in your house, connect them with small feedbacks. And what are the feedbacks I'm talking about? Uh, the parenting feedback, being a Juma, I'll give you a small thing I just shared with my children today, and this is something. The reminders are daily reminders. So number one, I'm going to share five things. I said this is the only important slide, perhaps for the entire. It will lay the rule for what we are talking about. Five simple reminders, which are ordinary things, but sometimes, as they say, it's the it's the ordinary that is forgotten, isn't it? You remember the awesome, you forget the ordinary. So number one, number one. Remember, the highest level of iman is ihsan. Where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Pray as if you see Allah, but because you can't do that, at least know that Allah is watching you." Level one, 
wherever you are you know allah is watching you and in the pandemic you know you can't run away from your wife's eyes subhanallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everywhere so you you know what i'm talking about the consciousness starts from there number one this is feedback you know you this is called feed forward you're telling yourself my rub is with me my rub is watching me my rub is my protector you know my rub uh, that the way of ibrahim alayhi salam hasbun allah wa naimal wakil wa naimal maula wa naimal nasir allah is my wakil allah is my witness allah is my maula my protector my nasir my helper so that's number one number two start with small zikrs you know the very idea of saying bismillah alhamdulillah you know little zikrs that you do the salams that you do spread the greetings of salam a sunnah number two number three begin with duas which we all do but sometimes this is what feedback we have to give ourselves duas of eating sleeping going into the toilet you know if you're climbing stairs small duas that you do that's number three number four a more rigorous routine but it's so simple the five daily salas you know these are the feedback that the champion muslim gives to himself or herself you are giving yourself this every now and then and you do it you may you may spend 5 minutes per salah let's say an average person thinks 5 minutes it's 25 minutes a day but you are assured for the 24 hour protection and the last one we are talking about is the zikr the connection with the quran it could be a small dars it could be reciting the book of allah it could be conveying the message whatever you learn today to the elders to the children in your house and these five are the feedback or the champion is all about this is what we are talking about in the entire webinar raising champion champion is a state of mind champion is not winning a trophy you know nike nike the most celebrated the company in the world does not want to make product for ordinary average people they don't want to make product for if you are average you buy you are consumers you see for nike you and i are consumers but the product are for for the champion for the usain bolts for who is uh, for for lionel messi for luka modric we are looking at that kind of champions we are looking at that kind of heroes this is a state of mind that you develop and that is what mindset shift is all about a mindset shift as a parent is you tell your child that you are not average and subhanallah in so many tests and so many surveys and believe me i'm very comfortable when i talk to kids not so much with grown ups but the more surveys and 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 you know reviews i'm doing i'm understanding that it's all here you know in the recent things that have happened with the suicides and the, and people being depressed and everybody becoming a mental health practitioner it is all here how are you conveying that qazi bad nasiya falyad nadiya sanad zabaniya sura ikra allah says this is forehead this is where the champions are made and defeated what is your championship ratio feedback and the five points i just shared with you Subhanallah there is a lovely story i want to share about and probably you would know this story is you know being poet you know camel stories more than i know but there was a lovely story about a camel and the mother you know what's the baby camel called i don't know if i can use the chat but if you are subhanallah a baby camel is also a calf like a baby cow or a baby elephant right so the baby camel the calf and the mother are talking to one another the conversation is happening and the baby is asking mother a lot of questions as most babies do unfortunately as parents we stop them you know one of the my, my biggest complaint with education system in schools is our children enter the school as question mark and they leave they exit the school as fifth period or full stop in between the last 10 years we curtail the questioning we curtail the creativity and that is what we are doing elsewhere also perhaps in homes itne sawal mat poocho don't bother me not now no abhi nahi don't do this the nose the negatives the stopping of creativity is more anyway back to my story where the baby camel is saying mama why do we have these hump you know the camel has hump so the mother says you see son you know we are desert animal we are desert creatures the hump is to store a lot of fat we have to extend and walk long distances wow that's nice mama oh why do we have these long eyelashes and a camel has two eyelids so the mama said you see the desert storms the sand dunes the, the that is too tough so you can actually you know close one and yet your eyes are protected you can still see that is why you got two eyelashes wow that's nice mama mama why do we have these long tender legs and a camel legs are very fragile but yet very very strong which is why if you if you see a car hitting a camel the camel falls on the car because it is not stable so the mother says you see son the long legs are forced to ease out of a path we are the ship of the desert we walk miles in desert the legs are meant for walking in the desert 
So now the baby is completely confused. He said, Mama, if everything is meant for the desert, the hump is for the desert, the eyelashes for the desert, the legs of the desert, what in the world are we doing in a zoo? Why, Mama, are we in a zoo? People are coming and watching us. You know, this is what I'm asking us. Our children, when we tell them the way of champions, when we want them to explore the world, what are we doing with them here? You know, not as in physical place. Alhamdulillah, be safe, be in home, be protected. But what are we doing when we're confining them with rote learning, with education pedagogies that will be outdated? You know, I ask myself, why are we not even asking them, challenging them to be creative? And this is what a uh, feedback that we give to ourselves. When you raise champion, you allow them to explore. You allow them to learn life skills, something that I'm a big proponent of. You allow them to choose their subjects. Perhaps, it, you know, the pandemic has shown education in different... Subhana, one of the best things that will happen in the pandemic is today the quality of education has improved. If nothing, you can see the teachers right here and observe and monitor them. So only the best teachers are appreciated and will survive. Otherwise, we are very, you know, uh, the very word Adam is from Nisyan, which means forgetfulness. In three to six months, we'll forget everything and we'll go back to our old ways. Hope we don't do that. We learn some lessons. So we start with the premise that, yes, your child is a champion. And for raising a champion, you need the champion's mindset. You and I will have to become a champion. Remind me, I'll tell you a story of why champions are. These are the three qualities that we need to raise a champion. We'll speak on one, inshallah, today uh, for all the time that we've got for two reasons. The reason we're only speaking on one, alhamdulillah, is because we want to justify what it really means. So we're going to speak about the upbringing, which nothing is but tarbiyah, how you're raising your kids. And then, inshallah, the reason I'm not also doing the two, that hopefully Farooq Bhai and Rafiq Bhai will call me again and do a seminar with you. You know, so, so subhanallah. But yes, it's a positive of the time, but it's upbringing, opportunities, and timing. These are the three qualities you need to raise champion. And who says that? Well, this is a very, very popular book called The Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell. Malcolm Gladwell is a top New York writer, a top published author, someone whose books like Blink, uh, what the dog saw, uh, David and Goliath are some amazing books. All of them, I'm a big fan of Michael Gladwell. I've picked these three things from his book, upbringing, opportunities, and timing. You, you raise your kids well, you seize the opportunities, and you spend enough time, you have champions at home, inshallah, ta'ala, in every field. So let's take up what we are doing, the, the opportunities, and go to the world of sports. Uh, with regards to sports, I said I will take up a Formula One and tennis and then we'll go to the world around us. And this is because we're only doing opportunities. Tarbiya is so powerful. Let me spend a little time on the word Tarbiya before I go to the sports part of it. Tarbiya is also originating in Arabic as a beautiful language and everything with three letter root words, right? Every single word in Arabic has a three letter origin except two words. And I leave that to Mashallah, our Shuk, Shaykh Uthman is there. And all of you find out what the two words are. Uh, perhaps, Mashallah, one is to do with Quran and Tajweed. And one is the Surah of the Quran. So that, those are your quiz questions, maybe. But everything is a three-letter root word. Tarbiya also originates from a simple root word with Rab. Murabbi. The word mentor is from word Rab again. Murabbi. When you are raising a child, you are becoming a child's Murabbi. You are doing a Tarbiya. English word will never justify, but the closest English word could be to nurture a child. You know, when I come to the Gulf state, I love the way the Ministry of Education is, is nominated or named. You know, they are not called uh, uh, Waziratul Ilm. That would be very loose definition. It is called Waziratul Talim wa Tarbiya. Isn't it? You are giving education, Talim, and then you are giving Tarbiya. You are nurturing them. And this is what Malcolm Gladwell is teaching us. Research is telling us. But this is what we're seeing from the world around us, from the world of sports. So let's go to this very, very popular rivalry in history. These are two very popular uh, sports people, Nikki and James. Nikki is a German sports Formula One racer. James Hunt is a British racer. And there's a very popular case study of what these were the I of the time in the early 1970s, 80s, they were the best Formula One racers. But then I'm going to give you a small quiz, a question perhaps. And, you know, maybe think out loud. Tell me the answers loud. Nicky, the German, was very, very disciplined. He was very ambitious. He had a long-lasting marriage. 
raising kids for 20 years, for two decades, married. A German guy had a discipline in his life. James Hunt, on the other hand, equally ambitious, equally talented, the British, but very carefree, broken relationships, perhaps would not be with the same person in the, in the next Formula One. Who do you think, if you had to choose, would be a better F1? Who has won more between the two? Who has won more titles? Is it Nicky the German or James the Britisher? And I know what you're telling yourself. And this is where one of the lessons comes in. One of the lessons that comes in is when you are stable in your marriage, when you are stable in your family, it could also be your businesses. When you are stable in your mind, you are raising healthier, stronger kids. You are the key. When you have to raise champion, it's not champions don't form overnight. Champions don't form because of a great school. It plays a part. It's important. But champions are already made in the houses. And that is what parenting is all about. So in our example, you know, Alhamdulillah, when I was working in Moscow and, and I used to travel a lot with, with these Germans. So my CFO was a German. And a great difference between how the German will communicate and someone like the great pun on how the Arabs would communicate. You know, it is, it is just, a, it's not being, but the Germans will be very, very precise. If your meeting has to start, it starts with a good morning and the meeting starts. Mashallah, with our Arab brothers and with Indians and all, you start talking about how are you, Kaifahal. The Sudani brothers would have a joke that they should give the uh, you know, 10 minutes of the mobile free because the first 10 minutes are, how is your aunt? How is your uncle? What did you make at house? How is your cow? How is the tree inside the house? And, you know, it is so funny because we are that, we are a community, larger community. We love each other. But the Germans are straightforward. If they don't like you, they tell you that. This is to do a lot with feedback. I'm not here to you know, ask about the communities, change your habits. That is not what we're talking about. We're saying when you want to be the father of a, of a champion, you have to think like a champion. It is not about Nikki and James. It is about their children, but that is the lesson we are learning. Let me come back to some example that is more popular. Most of us may not be into F1, but a lot of us who grew up in the early 90s and 2000 knows these two. They are what today's Djokovic and uh, Rafa Nadal or Roger Federer are. Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi. Now here, both are American, but look at the same chart. Pete Sampras, more disciplined, more ambitious, married over 20 years. Agassi, well, in fact, in the, in the autobiography of Andre Agassi, there's a autobiography called Open. He mentioned that when he was playing the Wimbledon Phylon, uh, again, Goran Ivanovic, he had this long hair and this was a wig. He said, I was more concerned about my wig falling off than winning the Wimbledon. More concerned about my image than my, my achievements. What world are we living? And you know who, who ended up earning more? You ended up, who ended up winning more trophies? Who ended up being more successful of the two? In fact, Pete Sampras would, would, would eat bananas during the Wimbledon matches. Agassi say it is beneath me to eat a banana. He said that's the best carbohydrate food you can have. He wouldn't mind because his focus was the achievement. His focus was the championship. His, Agassi's focus was for him, the dunya, the charm was much better. But today he's more stable man. He's married to a lovely German lady. So, you know, the idea is it, it starts with your spouse. It starts with your family. It starts with your thinking and then you raise champions. So, Alhamdulillah, I hope I, I made my point clear with regards to these two examples where the champion mindset comes from your discipline. You know, if you are getting up uh, 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock and you're sleeping very late with no discipline in your life and you expect your children to be disciplined, I'm sorry, my brothers and sisters, that's not the world we live in. Children do not see or hear with their eyes or ears. They see both. You know, when you say something, they watch you. When you tell them to leave their mobile phone, they watch you, my brothers and sisters. Are you sitting and watching something together? Are you reading something together? Are you playing something together? You know, if today in the pandemic, you're not spending time with the children, if you're not reading enough, it's not the lack of time, it's the lack of willpower. I repeat what I'm saying. If in the pandemic, you have not read at least three to five books, it's not the lack of willpower. It's not the lack of time. It's the lack of willpower, my brothers and sisters. So today you can't come and say, oh, brother, I didn't have time. Well, lie, this was pandemic. What were you doing? I'm sure most of us are busy and here I'm not judging anybody, but that's a choice you're making. Let's move from this world of the Formula One, the, the, the rivalries and tennis to a more different world, the world of the hips. I'm sure anybody 
who knows a bit about the Quran can identify this gentleman on the screen, isn't it? Subhanallah, I, I'm, I'm speaking for a long time and I hope I can, uh, you all can hear me. I, I will try to just, inshallah, I, I hope, uh, you know, Rafiq Bai can use the WhatsApp also. I can sometimes multitask, but at least you are here with me. You know who I'm talking about, the great Imam of our time, Imam Abdul Rahman of Sudais. Subhanallah, Sheikh of Sudais from the world of Hibs is an icon, is a role model. We can say he's a champion when it comes to the Quranic sciences. How much do we know about him? How did he become the Imam he became? What were the upbringing factors? What made him stand up and lead the Salah, Taraweeh after Taraweeh, Ramadan after Ramadan? We see him, we adore him, we admire him. He's a role model. What makes him the way he is? How does he become a champion? Let's look into the world that we are talking about. So let's look at the great Imam As-Sudais. Hafidahullah, may Allah protect him. So let's start with all the three things. I said, I'm not going to teach you, but inshallah, I'm going to bring all the three elements. Remember the three elements talking about upbringing, opportunities, and timing. So what are we looking at? Upbringing, opportunities, and timing. Number one, number one, the first thing, inshallah, I'll take some of the question answers later. Hopefully we'll, we'll finish our session on time and then we'll take the question answers. Uh, brother, uh, let me know. Upbringing, one of, one of the most beautiful incidents we are talking about one of the most beautiful things we're talking about is mother's dua. You know, it is said that Imam Sudais, and this is very funny also, very amazing anecdote. Imam Sudais was a hyperactive child, you know, like most of our children would be. He was so hyperactive, he would not sit in one place. He will jump from one place to another, stand up, go around. The mother, in all her anger, look at the way the mother is. She gave a dua to him. You know, he has no concept of bad dua. So she told him, may Allah make you stand for hours in front of the Kaaba and you cannot move away from here. So the mother said to his, his, her son that because you're so naughty and you're moving around, one day there will be time, there will become, you'll have to stand before the Kaaba and they're living in Najat, yeah, they're living in Saudi, you have to stand before the Kaaba, you'll not be able to move away from there. Oh Allah, subhanallah, look at a mom's dua, a mother's dua. Today Imam Sudeh stands three, four hours in front of the Kaaba reciting the Tarawi, leading the Sarat Tarawi and he cannot move from there. And look, even in your angers, please remember your duas are so valuable. Don't ever shortchange your duas, my brothers and sisters. Don't ever say something that is derogatory or negative to your children. I know a mother, someone I respect a lot in India, I'll not name the city or the place. She said one day, and she had a teenage son, one day for some music that he was playing so loudly, she got so angry, she said, I wish you leave the house and never come again. And the mom told me, I've never seen my son, and it is 15 years now, brothers and sisters. I know the person literally, she said, my son would be your age, Dawood. And I know her and I said, this is one instant where mother lost her cool and look at what the duas happened. So the upbringing, your, you know, that's what the feedback mentality is. What you tell them, they believe. So tell them they're good. Tell them good duas. Stroke their heads. Make, you know, that's number one. Number two is he grew up in Najd. Najd is the area which is known for the half of the Quran. It matters where you're growing up. Brothers and sisters, if you are living in the Gulf, if you are living in Kuwait, a city of Minars, a city of places, your icon itself is, is in a needle, mashallah. And if you're not taking advantage of the language of the people, of the scholars, of the masajids, it's your loss. It's an opportunity you are losing out. So that's something Imam Sudesh teaches us. The second thing, mashallah, we do not know about Imam Sudesh except the Quran. He is a very, very educated man. You know, remember, somebody asked a question, so let me just address it. Just remember one very important thing. World-class education without good morals will give you world-class criminals. World-class education without good morals will give you world-class criminals. And you can see the dictators around the world. You can see them. You know, uh, in Romania, there's a dictator called Milshovic. Or, or the, the ones we are very popular with, the North Koreans ones. They have great education, but they don't have good morals. So when you raise your child with the tarbiya, with the education, ilm, waziratu talim wa tarbiya. And look at the, subhanallah, the talim he got and the tarbiya, the upbringing he got. He is a graduate from Riyadh Scientific Institute, the Sharia, the masters from Imam Sudais, the PhDs. Subhanallah, he is a very well-learned man. Imam Sudais is a doctor Sudais, right? We don't associate, we don't say that, but he's a doctor in his PhD from Umm al-Qura University. And the last thing is the timing. 
you know, subhanallah, he completed the hifd of the Quran at the age of 12. Now, you know, it's not outstanding for, for an Arab child to do that. You know, subhanallah, just two weeks back, my daughter completed the Quran. I was so proud as a father. And I said, okay, Jannat ka ek asan rasta mein le liya. I don't think my deeds are good enough. Let me do the other way around. But subhanallah, these are the time, the youth, you know, the tweens, we call them. The tween is 9, 10, 11, maybe even little 14 and 15. That's the time you optimize it. If your kids are that age, talk to them, bring storybooks. You know, one of the things I really do, I have a lot of books that I can show you. Buy those DK books. They are lovely illustrated books. Read two pages with them every day. They will fall in love with theory. They will fall in love with education. They will fall in love with you, my brothers and sisters. And then he became an imam at a young age of 22. That are the three qualities I'm talking about. The upbringing, the opportunities, and the timing. I hope we are going good on timing. Let's move ahead. All right. So from one case study to another, from Saudi and, and the sports, let's go to China. What do Chinese speak and eat? Not the best country today. Not everyone loves it. But what do Chinese speak and what do Chinese eat? Tell yourself loudly. And, and perhaps, we, we, you know, if it's a Juma Khutbah, I wouldn't be interacting with you. But hopefully, you know, we're understanding the etiquettes of everything. If you have told yourself the Chinese speak Chinese and eat Chinese, you're wrong on both accounts, right? Chinese speak Mandarin and they eat rice. SubhanAllah. You know, they don't eat Chinese or they don't eat everything, by the way. That's one section. That's, of course, some part of it. But that's what we forget about it. What is the eating habit to do with the upbringing, the tarbiya and championship? By the way, China is one of the best emerging nations to compete with the United States in the Olympics, isn't it? China is one of the top nations to compete with Germany in economy because one of the world's best economies is Germany's economy. China is one of the top countries to compete with Finland in education. So we're talking about everything. We're talking about business. We are talking about sports. We are talking about uh, economy. We are talking about education. What makes China so good. So we are looking at subhanallah rice. And the, and the answer is rice. What is it to do with rice? You see, Chinese are not good because they eat right, but because the amount of effort that went in the ancestors. And today, China is largely an agrarian society. So a lot of churches of China still, you know, they have paddy fields, they have rice fields. A Chinese toddler can count up till 100. When an English toddler at the same time could count till 20. What are we doing? What are we talking about? Subhanallah, we're talking about this one word called persistence. One simple word that we're talking about is the very idea that the Chinese have in strong quality is persistence. In Arabic, it would be israra and azima. Determination and persistence. Musalsal kisi cheez ko karte rehna. Not to give up. In the words of Angelina Duckworth, a TED talk I strongly recommend that you should watch. She says that grit is the word I'm talking about. Grit. What is to do with the rice and agriculture? Well, rice fields are one of the most difficult fields to sow. You know, if you look at the rice fields, subhanAllah, this is a little Chinese guy I know, subhanAllah, and the rice fields, you have to sow and you, it's in water. You know that, right? If you have, if you, have, you know, so even in the Indian society, the ones who have raised in West Bengal, why are a lot of Nobel laureates from West Bengal, Bengalis? You know, it could be Rabindranath Tagore or uh, Muhammad Yunus from Bangladesh or the recent uh, Abhijit Banerjee. Because, you know, it is somewhere you don't give up easily. But if we are born with a silver spoon, we say, oh, yeah, Chani, let's give it up. And this is what is happening with the Chinese. If you want to teach your child to be a champion, teach the word grit, G-R-I-T. Teach the word persistence. China is so good today. China is so good today. The UK government hired 60 teachers for maths from Shanghai to teach in UK. Today, China is the market that everyone's afraid of. May not be the best interest of everybody, but today the dragon is truly, you know, if you have seen, mashallah, George R. R. Martin, it's Dracaris. You know, the fire is on in the world, and that's what we do. So let's come to the concluding part of, of our Juma uh, webinar. And where are we taking all of this to? What are we talking about? We took, inshallah, and I'll do a small summary of what I spoke about. And I hope you learn a few things from today. One of the key words of the champion mindset is called Aulad al-Masajid. Aulad al-Masajid, in simple words, are children of the Masajid. When you think of Masjid, what comes to your mind? The Imam, the Musalla, the Mimbar, the Juma, 
the parking problems, of course, isn't it? And the great ustas that we have got. And I've learned something. I've put a very important slide here. I'll talk about it. You know, if the court says it takes a village to raise a child, I say it takes a masjid to raise a child, or rather I will cut it. I'll say it takes a masjid to raise a champion. Why? Because if you're associated with an organization that calls you for feedback five times a day, that calls you to reminder on every Juma, that has a community upbringing to it, that has a society coming in, that has your goals so clear, and that Alhamdulillah serves good food, as in this case of ICK and Kuwait, mashallah, you already have the ingredients for a champion. Not the champion, my brothers and sisters. You see, the difference between an ingredient and a good food is recipes don't make you good cook. Just by knowing the recipe, I know a lot more recipes, but tell me to make food and probably you will still order from Swiggy and Zomato or you will go outside in your neighbor's house and eat it because you still need to cook it well. So the masjid is the right ingredient. Then it's the people like you brothers, like your imams, your khatibs, like the amirs, they are the ones who raise champion and that is the area we're talking about. Look at Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sahih Muslim Hadith of Rasulullah, that the most beloved place to Allah are the mosque. And the most hated place are the market. I'm sorry, but I have to be sarcastic. Look at the way we think. We allow the women in the market, but not in the mosque. I'm talking about you, I'm talking about generic. You know, we allow our children in the market, not in the masajid. You know, subhanAllah, Dr. Bilal, alhamdulillah, may Allah protect him, hafidahullah, uh, when he was in Chennai, and one day, a very interesting incident happened. He lived for a year in India, Dr. Bilal Phillips. And one of the things happened that he bought, he used to bring his son Luqman to the masjid on, in the Fajr. Every day, Luqman would be there in the masjid in the Fajr. And you know how people are, the typical uncles that we have. Mashallah, no, none of you old people are uncles. I see you all very young at heart, very smart, very articulate. May Allah protect you and keep you that way. But some of the, of the, of the uh, cities in India, we have this typical thing. Even if you bring it, they stand at the back row, not in the front row. So they, you know, they saw the boy one day, two day, perfect etiquette, perfect manners, perfect Quran. They said, you know, the boy should sit behind. The boy should not be the first row in the Fajr in the masjid. And look at the scholars, the way they answer. Dr. Bilal told them, he didn't say why, what's wrong. This, you know, he didn't say the Hadith of Abdullah bin Abbas. He didn't say any of them. He said, I just want to ask you one question. And my question is, where are your sons? Where are your sons? Is what he asked them. He didn't say anything. He said, my son is coming on the, in Masjid in Fajr. Where are your sons? Sleeping in air-conditioned room? Look at the world you're living in. Where are the champions going to come from if you don't talk about it? There are three things that a Masjid teaches us. Adab, Ilm and Amal. Adab, Manners, Ilm. Knowledge or information rather, uh, ilm would be rather knowledge itself. Amal is action. Iqrarum bin lisani, tasdikum bin kalbi, amalum bin jawari. You know, entire, entire, uh, you say, the summary of iman is right here. So when, when you ask me a question that despite good knowledge, why are some of the people in the world not as good as we say? Why are they not champion? Because you missed out one ingredient. The masajid is an, is an amalgamation ingredient. Just ilm will not help you. As I said, subhanAllah, they're world-class criminal. You know, money heist is all about brilliant criminals doing something not good for the society or whatever, you know, whichever side you are in. The rock concerts are people with a very beautiful, brilliant in the, in the talent. But the amals are not good. They're drug addicts. You know, they are depressed minds. And adab, the manners, the etiquette. SubhanAllah, this is what we're talking about. So where is the place of ilm? And here we are talking about. What place am I talking about? What is the city? And I'm sure, I wish it was more somewhere I could ask you. Somewhere, subhanAllah, very simple. This is Uzbekistan, where the great Imam, Imam Bukhari grew up. Imam Bukhari, the author of Adab al-Mufrad. Imam Bukhari, the author of the, you know, you know the, he's the compiler of the Sahih Bukhari. He is an example of all the three amalgamating in the world. His amal, his ilm, and his adab. Look at the way, his amal, mashallah, I can't go on and explain about the stories of it, but I can tell you one thing, the way they grew up. Champions love whatever they do. You know, if you ask your son to name the players of Barca or Chelsea or whatever players they love, or, or if, if you're like me, I'm, I'm more of a Chinnai Super King fan, subhanAllah, if you ask me, probably, probably, we'll name at least eight, nine players, probably well enough or at least six, seven, or whatever it is. 
if you ask a chemistry professor to name the periodic tables all the elements he would do that if you are some teacher some sports people someone you would do that if you are if you are like you know your technology you can name 20 apps right now the way the salaf used to love the sanad they could memorize it like that so another quality of a champion is a champion loves what they do if you don't know your heroes if you don't know your narratives if you don't know the people we love how will you even narrate them how will you talk about them it is said the salaf will recognize the sanad from the second row onwards You know, I give an example of this. That Subhanallah, it is like, and I Subhanallah, this is an example I learned in, with a lot of children in the Gulf in Kuwait. I came down. They would tell me the name of the car from the sound it makes. Oh, that's Pajero, and they don't say Pajero. They have X, Y, Z, or whatever Q is added to it. Four by four is a luxury in India. We don't have it, but they know. They know a BMW. The 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 you know the sound it makes from a Merc, from a from a Lamborghini. they know that they know the jaguars well the salaf knew the sanad that well if you don't identify with heroes how will you know the heroes subhanallah you know there is an entire series that is going on the turkish series and 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 using that just using that i did a dars on the real turkish series because i, I remember a scholar saying very nicely don't google the actors in in the real world you will be shocked and you will hate them for life so don't do that my brothers and sisters but if you know who 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 usman ghazi was if you know who muhammad al fatih was there is a movie on muhammad al fatih and i love that that, that scene is so amazing when he was a child his father his murabbi remember we tying everything down his mentor used to recite the hadith whoever whoever wins constantinople what an amir he is so khairu khairu amiran wa khairu khairu jaishun the jaish the army is beautiful the amir is beautiful and it is said when he grew up he would recite the hadith from the memory salauddin ayubi his his ustad nuruddin zinki would tell him it is jerusalem that you have to conquer these are the goals they set for him these are the dreams they set for him and that is why you see them as champion who are the heroes your children can talk about so you know which center i'm talking about but there was a scheme and i learned this many years back and i thought this is a deserving end to a great session that we're talking about the very motivation to do hifz subhanallah so one of the center said if your child complete hifz before the age of 12 in kuwait mashallah taala the child will get free education for the rest of the life and the father will be gifted a toyota corolla uh, please tell me brother sister if that it's your center or not but trust me i don't know for the education but toyota corolla is a great motivator i will do all the best to get my daughter to be hifz alhamdulillah right so so perhaps i missed the corolla by two years but that's not the point the point is what's the glee goals what's the dream what are your motivation and i end with this one little story of akhlaq of someone from beirut now some a scholar called abdur rahman al auzai and you should know them you should name them i would love to their biographies itself he was raised as an orphan but yet the kings would be unable to cultivate the kind of manners that his father raised for abdul abdur rahman al auzai you know the, when you see a child you know the family they belong to or the family they should not have belong to by the manners they are the way they speak and i tell all the children the way you are behaving on the zoom in the online classes shows a lot about how which families you're coming from shows a lot about how your father or mother watches the mobile phone and you can make out because that's what i do i study children all my day from morning i sit down only observing classes i do 6 hours of observation every single day except for sundays so akhlaq is something that is shown and subhanallah uh, so much about fathers so much of fathers so here is about a mother and this is a single mother and the concept of single mother did not exist then but a mother who raised zaid bin sabit radiyallahu ta'ala anhu saiba a multitasker mother zaid was given the task of compiling the quran by abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala and zaid said i wish he had asked me to push and move the mountains that would be easy on me Zaid is someone who Rasulullah said to learn Hebrew. He learned the language in 15 days. Zaid is supposed to have learned 17 languages. Polyglot is someone who knows five. Zaid is a triple polyglot. These are the champions. Zaid was given a goal by Rasulullah. Zaid learned the language. I want to understand the communication of the Jewish tribe, the Banu Qainuka, the Banu Quraida, Banu Nadir, and Zaid did it. Brothers and sisters. champion is a state of mind and that is where we end our webinar of today you want to raise a champion everyone believes our child as a champion 
No parent here says that my child is not a champion. But subhanallah, we took examples of the world around us. One of the examples was from the fifth world, besides the sports, of Dr. Imam As-Sudes. And the dua of the mother we spoke about, the education he had, and the opportunities that was given to him. We spoke about the Chinese model, and trust me, a, a noble model in terms of great ambitions. As I said, the three things that the Mahajit teaches us is adab, ilm, and, and amal. Amal as in action. And perhaps somewhere, most of us miss one of these. And I said the awlad al-masajid, associated masjid. If you're hearing the dars, and if you're hearing it alone, I trust me, it is a very selfish thing we are doing. If your children are not with you, I know I'm not the best speaker, but it's important to communicate what you heard today to your family, because that is what the best purpose of the masajid is. And then we said, you love something like the Salafs would love the, the Isnad, the chain of narration, the way you love something, you will become that. And this is what I have to share with you. Barakallah Feek, all good is from Allah Azza wa All mistakes are mine. I'm uh, Dawood Waid from Mumbai. You can reach me, Jazakallah Brother Rafiq, for having the trust in me. And all the brothers in ICK, Sheikh Uthman, Mashallah, I admire a lot. The entire brothers out there, the community that is doing some amazing work. May Allah SWT accept what little work we're doing. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallah wa bihamdika. Ashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu alayhi. Jazakallah khair, Brother Dawood, for this beautiful reminder. Let us all become a champion, or at least start thinking like a champion, for us to raise our kids as champions, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. With that, uh, we are open for question and answers. And if you are at uh, Zoom, you can always uh, type the question, uh, your questions in the chat box, in the Q&A chat box. If you are on Facebook Live, you can send us uh, your questions as comments or direct message. Uh, Brother Dawood, we have one question and I'll read it out uh, for you, inshallah. Uh, if mentoring and upbringing are the two most important factors, how does one explain the success of leaders like Obama, Tyson, Muhammad Ali, and many others who, in the opinion of the person who's asking the question, had very basic or minimal mentoring and grooming? God-given gift and talents do they not contribute? SubhanAllah, I think, uh, Brother Sami, you've already answered your question that, as I said, the ingredients could be many. And there is no one formula for, for the right success. Uh, and there is no one hero that in the worldly context that we say is the right success. Perhaps you only go back to the leaders we all can associate with. Look at his upbringing. He had a difficult upbringing, didn't he? He was an orphan. Abdullah, uh, his father expired. His mother expired. Abu Talib. Uh, you, know, you know, Abdul Muttalib expired later than Abu Talib. So the idea is a lot of factors contribute. But yet the impact that the people had on him was amazing. Well, Obama, if you read his biography, in fact, Michelle Obama speaks about the time. Sometimes hard time, tough time makes you much better, more empathetic. You know, there was the, she, she mentioned in, in the biography that we had a car with a hole inside it. Imagine the future president of the United States have a hole inside it. A black president. There was a statement which says, if, if, if a black man goes to the White House, the pigs will fly. When Obama became the president, the swine flu was the disease. So the pigs really flew, swine flu. That's a joke, by the way, right? The idea is, brothers, yes, a lot of it, uh, we, there's a book called Talent is Overrated. What I mean is, sometimes it is a grit. Sometimes some of the people you're talking about did not have a very favorable uh, growing up. Mike Tyson, subhanAllah, Muhammad Ali Clay, but that also made them more resilient. You know, our kids, we are not making them persistent. Like today, subhanAllah, trust me, uh, if I went to use the word, when, when it did not happen, the internet did not happen, I told myself, it's the best, my intentions are honest, my pure, I'm working and, and for no reason it should not work. Today my internet should not work, it says zero bandwidth right now. And by Allah's grace it worked. And it is, it is when difficult time comes in, you go back to the resources and say, what worse can happen? And this, these are the heroes who told themselves, the worst has already happened to us. I'm watching a series, uh, a movie called Invictus, uh, how Nelson Mandela, when he grew up to be president, and how he chose uh, the rugby team, the white rugby team to you know, become a cause for the nation. Amazing, amazing stories, you know, from the world across us. So, Brother Sami, I respect you, I know you, and you already gave your answer that it's a contribution of a lot of these things. Jazakallah khair, brother. The next question is from Brother Hussain. You recommended to read a book and every day two pages. Can you recommend us some names of which book or is it Quran that you're referring? 
Okay, uh, so so brother Hussain, uh, mashallah, I always say that uh, have a variety of books to read with. Uh, you know, the Salafs used to say when the camels, you know, when they re eat the green grass too much, they take them to the desert to eat the cactus. So you appreciate the green grass a lot. So sometimes you know, as parents, I trust me, and this is, I'm saying from all the experiences of running some Islamic centers across, that sometimes as parents, we give them too much of Islam. And they say, oh, mama doesn't speak anything except Islam, Islam, and Islam. And they kind of get distance from it. And with all due respect, I say, give them a variety. I use uh, my references for, for teaching my children. I use a very, a very beautiful book called Don't Be Sad by Sheikh Aydal Karni. It's such an amazing book. So I take a one topic and the many conversations that happen around it. Another of my favorite book is Enjoy Your Life. Subhanallah, uh, Sheikh Al-Arifi. So these are the two books I recommend strongly to read with your children. The other books I read is I pick up these DK books. You know, it's a publisher's name. They have lovely illustrated books under 1,000 rupees. One book lasts six months for me. And I use these books to talk about it. It could be dinosaurs or cars. We're reading one on gemstones, subhanAllah. But these are some amazing books to read about. So there you are. Jazakallah khair. Uh, the next question is uh, from uh, Sister Naseem Maryam. And I think uh, she wants to learn more from your experience uh, of working with kids. And her question is that uh, uh, the stories of Sira and prophets and companions, why parents no longer tell these stories to their kids? All right, Sister Maryam, uh, sister, we should ask the parents who don't tell the stories, but uh, let me tell you a story myself now. You know, I'm sorry if I become a little longer. Uh, these, the, you all know the story of these two young boys, they call the Maaz and Maazatan, uh, who were in Badr. And they were anxious to fight Badr. So they were paired with Abdurrahman bin Awf, radiallahu ta'ala. And as soon as they reached, they said, uncle, uncle, um, um, show us where this, this, is, this Abu Jahl is. And these are Ansar kids. These are the children of Ansar, born and brought up, raised in Medina. They have not seen the, the persecution of Makkah. How do they know who, Abdur, who, who this Abu Jahl is? They want to just, you know, the only enemy is Abu Jahl. And now, Somewhere the parents must be telling them the Sira story. You know, this time, remember, they are living the Sira also. Someone must be telling them the stories, must be the parents who's telling, you know, what happened to Rasulullah in Makkah, what, what Utbah did, what, what, what Abu Jahl did, what Abu Lahab did, and they grew up with this passion. So, number one, of course, subhanAllah, you must, you know, so the Ansars would tell stories of, of Makkah to the children. We are depriving our kids of these stories. Uh, one little uh, resource I can share with you is when my daughter Juaria was five years, I had a series called Bedtime Stories with Jumpy Juaria. Uh, Mashallah, for some reason I lost it. Alhamdulillah, I retrieved it. I'm going to put them online again. Alhamdulillah. So every night I will tell them one story from the Hadith of Rasulullah. It could be the man who killed 100 people, it could be the lost camel story, the, uh, the story of you know, the shaitan trying to steal uh, dates from it. Very nice stories. So these became bedtime stories, Jumpy Juaria, as she's called, she's 12, 10 years old now, after five years. I'll share the stories, listen to them and tell them, Barakallah, it'll be wonderful. There's a story series that you can read up. There's some beautiful Sira books. Icon Network, ICO, another publication has started a, a beautiful book on Sira. You can pick up Rahik al Maktoum and tell the stories. Please tell the stories. Stories are what people remember. People forget statistics. You tell them stories, they'll grow up and tell stories talk to the children. And that is how a sanad of champions are formed. So Jazakallah for the question. And yes, it's beautiful. Jazakallah khair for the answer. And brother, the next question is from Sister Maria Zishan. I'll be grateful if you can recommend good and interesting books for kids aged 10 and above. All right. Uh, Immediately, difficult to immediately pull up. Uh, I, I would like to know what genre you would like to know books with. Like, is it is it the religious books? So I would say, you know, pick up a good publications. Darul Salam has got a book called Golden Morals. Uh, some nice story books that you have got. So these are nice. It's not just the story books. If again, sister, my whole idea is if you give a book to a child and say, hold, this is ten books I've got. Okay, the religious book they're talking about. So I would give you a lot of others. To me, I don't differentiate between the two ideas, but Golden Morals is a lovely book, by the way, Darus Salams. Pick up the book, but trust me, they will not read it unless you enjoy reading with them. So that's my only advice with you is, you pick up two stories and read with them. They will like it. Uh, any Sira book is beautiful. Uh, there are so many books around, so I will pile up some, compile some names for, for you, and I'll share them, inshallah, with you. Jazakallah khair.